Happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. I'm going to read the account of Jesus' death, starting with Mark 14, verse 32. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him. And he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then Jesus said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. Jesus went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. The Lord's will must be done. I added that. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came the third time, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Verse 43. And immediately while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with the great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. As soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on Jesus and took him. And one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said to them, Have you come out against, as us against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. Now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young men laid hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Jesus away to the high priest. With him were assembled all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes. But Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none, for many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. 
Then some rose up and bore a fault witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? Three, two, one, go. What is it that these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further do we have witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him, and to blindfold him, and to beat him, and to say to him, Prophesy. And the offers struck him with the palms of their hands. Now as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And when he saw, when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You are also with Jesus of Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out on the porch, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again, but began to say to those who stood by, This is one of them. But he denied it again. And a little later, those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and your speech shows it. Then he began to curse and swear. I do not know this man whom you speak. A second time the rooster crowed. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he thought about it, he wept. Chapter 15 Immediately in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked Jesus again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you. But Jesus still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Verse 6. Now at the feast he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whomever they requested, and there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with the fellow rebels, and they had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he always done for them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, What then do you want me to do with him, whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And he delivered Jesus, after he had scourged him, to be crucified. 
Verse 16. Then the soldiers led Jesus away into the hall called the Praetorium. And they called together the whole garrison, and they clothe him with purple, and they twist a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! Then they struck him on the head with a reed and spat on him. And bowing, bowing the knee, they worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple off him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Verse 21. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon, a Cyrian, Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. And they brought him to a place Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. And they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but Jesus did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, the, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above. The King of the Jews. With him, they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who pa um, passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was a darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried. Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Elohi, Elohi, Lama Sebastani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone, let us see Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and breathed his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, Jesus, the less and of Joseph and Salome, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Now when evening had come, because it was preparation day, that it is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph Arimathea, a prominent council member who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, coming to take courage, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead. 
and summoning the centurion, he asked him if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Then he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid Jesus in the tomb, which had been hewn out of rock and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, observed where he was laid. Chapter 16, verse 1. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices, that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man, clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Verse 9. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, Jesus first appeared to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him. As they mourned and wept, and when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them, as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. All these signs will follow those who believe. In, in Jesus' name, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And when they lay hands on the sick, they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen, amen, and amen.
what really touched my heart is chapter 16, verse 7. And as the story is fresh in your mind, after they, they came to the tomb and the door was found open and rolled away, I believe it was the Spirit of the Lord that was sitting um, where Jesus had lain. And, and in and verse 6, he said, Don't be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? Verse 7, But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. He specifically mentioned Peter's name. He didn't mention anybody else. He said the disciples and Peter. And I love that because Peter denied him three times before the rooster crowed twice. And the love of the Lord is so good that even when we deny him, he still loves us. He still finds us treasured in his heart. And that really meant a lot to me. That he mentioned Peter's name specifically because he wanted Peter to be at rest, that to be at ease, to know that he is forgiven that he mentioned his name specifically so that Peter would know that he's forgiven. And that just, that is just brings just, oh, it just makes my heart like explode with just, just thankfulness. You know, we've all gone through hard trials and what keeps on bringing us back is God's love is pure love for us is forgiveness for us you know, I know that there's been times in my life and I don't want to make this too much longer than it is that that I have I've spited Jesus you know I was I was spiting him and I was mocking him and and in those rough times in my life and the Lord after even doing that, still forgave me when I asked him to forgive me and still forgave me even before I probably asked him. And just knowing that even Peter, even Peter that denied Christ three times, his name was specifically and specially mentioned in verse 7 of chapter 16 of Mark. That just, if that just doesn't make your heart swell with love, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. And um, I just, I'm getting just goosebumps all over thinking about that. I'm just, I'm just, usually every year I do an account of Jesus birth at Christmas time and I'm like Lord I want to do the account of of your passing of your death this year I've never done that and so the Lord set it up this way and of course I could have read the regular King James version but the Lord also wants it to be easier for people to understand especially people that are not um that don't read the Bible all that much that are not um informed with the language and and for me when i was just coming up in the lord the king's james version was really difficult for me so i was going to read that and the lord's like no read the new king's james version because people will understand it better so even god just leads everything amen so i just pray that you have a wonderful resurrection sunday and as much candy and yummies that you're going to eat tomorrow it nothing it doesn't compare to the love of god just does not compare all those goodies and, and meals that you're going to have just does not compare to the love of God that even if you haven't asked God into your heart yet, God still loves you.
he's still calling you. Even if you haven't, you know, um, said, Lord, I'm sorry. God still loves you. He still loves you. He loves you like he loved Peter who denied him. He still loves you and will always love you and will never leave you nor forsake you, no matter how much you try to run away from him. God is so good. Thank you so much for watching this. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday, y'all. Bye.